Welcome to the sixth session in this Becoming Safe People series. Uh, so this session is about slowing down, about silence and about listening to God um, because we flourish when we turn off the noise of the world uh, and we pause ourselves long enough to hear from God. Uh, Ronald, Ry Ronald Rollheiser says, we are distracting ourselves into spiritual oblivion. Do you have any thoughts on that, Michael? Yeah, I mean, we, we live in such a busy and noisy, chaotic mm. world. And, you know, we only have to look at, you know, the statistics in society around anxiety and mm. depression and things like that. And uh, in, in a world that we have, especially Western, uh, Western world, we have so much stuff. Um, but we are finding ourselves having to be busy to keep up with mm -hmm. Uh, gaining stuff and you know just all of that sort of stuff and uh, John McComa said that that hurry is doing violence to our soul mm. and you know, we just weren't designed to live such hurried That's right. chaotic stressed lives and and as people of God as the flourishing community of God we we should be demonstrating and showing the world an alternate way mm. to live and and so, you know, it's that whole disrupting the system kind yeah, of idea. Right. You know, we have to disrupt the system that is causing utter chaos in our world mm -hmm. and show that there, there is a different way. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. And so uh, Richard Foster says that uh, though silence sometimes involves the absence of speech, it always involves the act of listening. And so I guess there's a question, you know, if I'm silent and if I'm not moving, if I am ruthlessly eliminating hurry from my life, who is in control? Yeah. Um, you know, do we trust God enough to still do the doing yeah. whilst we are pausing? Yeah, and and I think in such a a busy, noisy world, mm. the whole act of silence and solitude and that slowing down um, can feel very out of control mm -hmm. for us, but. I guess the point is for us to be out of control is to be relinquishing control to the mm -hmm. only one who can be trusted to be in control that's right. and that's God. Yeah. And so it, it is a, a purposeful, distinct act of trust mm. to slow down. Yeah. And you know, I, uh, John McComas book, The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry, he talks about even while he was I guess defragging his life from mm -hmm. busyness, he would choose deliberately to go on the slow lane. Yes. You know, I remember that bit of the book. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just to force himself mm. to choose slowing down yes. so that he can listen yeah. to God. And, yeah. mm. and it feels really, um, we can say uncomfortable, it's also unfamiliar. Because mm. if we haven't done it before, then it's going to feel really unfamiliar. It might feel really exposed. Um, and because sometimes we avoid silence and solitude, not just because life is busy, but because we're not willing to be exposed before God. Yes. Um, and so we will try to avoid those spaces. Yes. Um, yeah. You know, if we want to practice that, that whole um, search my heart, God, <laughs> this, this is the practice for absolutely. it. Absolutely. Where we just sit in the solitude, mm -hmm. not isolation, but yeah. in solitude and in silence. Yeah and just say, God, here I am. Mm. And I feel really uncomfortable. Dallas Willard says that um, we can only survive solitude if we cling to Christ there. Right. So solitude on its own, that's not enough. No. And it's actually, yeah, search my heart, God, come in, let me be with you in this space. Yeah, so the practice of solitude without Christ is isolation. Absolutely. And that's not, that's not help, helpful, no. that's not healthy. Uh, we weren't made to be isolated. Um, and so solitude is a distinct setting apart mm -hmm. of oneself from the busyness of life to connect with God yep. alone and to listen, mm. to let him search our hearts. Yeah. And then to reconnect with the world again with a fresh pers perspective yep. and a rejuvenated spirit. That's right. And, and, and that sense of contentment, I think that's, for, for me, the result of solitude and silence mm. has been coming out with a sense of contentment uh, that yeah. I don't need to engage in the hustle and bustle of the world mm. to 
Um, because what we are ultimately searching for is peace, yeah. isn't it? And so if, if I, you know, we have these ideas in the West that if we have the right amount of money, if we have the right amount of things, if we have the right job, mm-hmm. if we have the right this, the right that, then, then we'll find peace there. Uh, but pers- peace is a person, and That's his name right. is Jesus. And That's so right. when we sit in the silence and solitude, mm-hmm. we, we are sitting in the, in the presence of peace. Yeah. And now we become peacemakers to go mm-hmm. into the world. That's right. And represent him well. And when we think about the story of Elijah in the Bible too, when he ran to the mountain, or he went to the mountain, he was exhausted, he was done, God kill me. Um, he met with God in that silent place. Mm. And then he went away with a renewed sense of purpose. Yes. So God, there's like a reminding in that space of who we are, yeah. as well as who God is, um, of our purpose, of our calling. Uh yeah, so we can go away, the tank gets filled up in that mm, space. Yeah, 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 totally. Yeah, and it's also helpful, I think, when we're um, journeying through grief. I know in the last session we talked about forgiveness mm-hmm. and the connection with forgiveness and experiencing loss. Yeah. Um, you know, sometimes that, that place of silence and solitude is a great place for us to, to actually sit in grief mm. uh, with God and just uh, sit with that grief for a while and just sit with God in, in that uh, so that we can journey through, you know, the, the forgiveness and, yeah. um, you know, finding that, that person of peace again mm. in the midst of that grief and loss. That's important. Uh, so we've got a quick illustration to kind of show what can happen in solitude. Uh, at least this is true for me, and um, I've been thinking about this a little bit the last couple of weeks. So right. uh, in that place of solitude, it can feel really uncomfortable and unfamiliar. Um, I find for me anyway that the thoughts begin to race a little bit. Like I find that I, my brain gets louder before it gets quiet. And then in right. that space, I might be starting to have some thoughts. And it might be whatever has frustrated me that day. Like I might be really angry and frustrated. Um, I might have questions like, why God? Um, Why did you let that happen? Why was he a jerk? Um, (laughs) Why did she say that? Um, And so all these things begin to come out and it can be a lot of rage, a lot of, you know, upset. There might be some tears depending on, you know, where we are, a bit of futility going on. And so all this stuff starts to come out and God lets us, like he just lets you go, which I love. But really what God is trying to get us to is down into that deep stuff, into these questions that actually, the ones that he can start to respond to. So the, what if I'm not enough? What if I'm not capable? Mm. What if I'm not in control? Mm. What if I'm not safe? And it's all of these things that God wants to get down. And then when we get into that space where we've kind of got all of that energy out, God can sit in that space with us and start to speak the truth yeah. of who we are, who he is, that actually in him we are enough. Yeah. In him we are safe. Yeah. He's in control. Yeah. Our Father God, we don't need to be. Um, and that's why for me that this um, yeah, silence and solitude is so important. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And so you're you're actually getting you're you're sitting in it long enough. To get mm. past the surface stuff, because we all have, you know, primary emotions, mm. and then usually the secondary emotions yep. are the real ones. And sometimes we need coaching actually mm-hmm. to help get uh, under the yep. surface. Um, or sometimes we, you know, just sitting with God long enough mm. to get out all of the stuff that's bubbling up. That's right. And and I, I don't know about you whether this has been your experience, but. Uh, when we're bubbling all of those things up in a quite big mm-hmm. emotions, uh, it's almost like you're going, God, why aren't you responding to mm. these? Mm. And then when you get to the real things, yeah. it's like, I, I don't know about you, there's almost a, there's a, there's a different posture yeah. within, within me when I'm getting to the real ones. Yeah. And now I'm starting to hear from God. Because he's wanting to speak to those That's right. those deeper things of the heart. Yeah. Because all, all of the other stuff is just um, surface layer stuff. It's, yeah. You know, and so um, you know, with with our um, young boy Israel, we have had to sort of coach him with some of that stuff. Because he he experiences mm. a lot of anger and frustration, um, and and it's a lot of it's connected to the loss of his grandma. Mm. 
and um, and so when he's reacting, and that you know they're big emotions, mm. and it affects the whole environment of the home, and uh, and so we're having to learn how to say to just actually give him a hug in those moments and say, what what are you sad about mm. right now? What are you scared of? Yeah. Because they seem to be the two primary, yeah. um, deeper emotions that are, are coming out, and they mm. look like anger, but. And so then he's able to say, well, this morning I woke up feeling really sad about yeah. about grandma or I'm really scared about something happening to someone in our family. And so that they're usually the two things that are going on for him. And so we're helping him to to navigate those well yeah. and, and to bring them to Jesus. You know, we mm. pray for him and, and that seems to settle him really well and then yeah. he can move on with the day. Uh, but I, I think, um, you know, the fruit of solitude for us is then we be, we become safe for yes. others because we've we've learned how to process some of the stuff and yeah absolutely yeah yeah we know what it is to sit with god in those deep places yeah yeah which is, is part of spiritual formation it's part of us becoming spiritually mature um i think as we uh, get that sense of just yeah love and security in him we can extend that to others yeah yeah, yeah. and w- do you think there's a difference between like just thinking about the orange balls, all that sort of stuff. <laughs> is that mind stuff, head stuff? And mm. then the, the white balls are like, that's the heart. Dropping down into yeah. the heart, yeah. yeah. I'd say so. Yeah, because sometimes we're just trying to rationalize things. We're trying yeah. to figure it all out. And often that's coming from us wanting to be in control that's of right. the situation or, or whatever. And we're trying to just figure everything out. Um, especially if we're stressed about work mm-hmm. or there's there's some scenario going on and we're just trying to we need to yeah. rationalize it we need to fix it we need to and you know all of those things yeah. but actually God's wanting to get to the heart mm. the deep stuff um, and help us work through that stuff yeah yeah, yeah bring so that stuff to him Great. Well, I hope that session has been really helpful for you, and uh, I just really encourage you to to take some time to engage in this practice of of silence and solitude. Maybe you can talk together in your group about uh, about ways that you might do that and encourage one another uh, in in doing that in the coming in the coming weeks. Well, let's pray. Father, we just thank you that that you are you are not in a hurry <laughs> like we are. That, uh, that for you, you are actually trying to form us and shape us and mold us and guide us uh, into being image bearers, ones who, who look like Jesus. And we thank you that even when we look in the Gospels that you, Jesus, you, you never seem to be in a hurry. You, know, you took your time with people, you took your time uh, with what you were about, you knew clearly the things that the Father was calling you to, and clearly the things that Father wasn't calling you to. And so we want to we want to imitate you, Christ. We want to we want to be people who, in a very hurried and busy world, are able to to live unhurried lives, lives that have have time for others, lives that aren't consumed with with things, uh, lives that aren't consumed with with, with gaining material things. And Father, we just thank you for this practice of silence and solitude. You are the God who said, be still and know that you are God. And I thank you that in these moments where sometimes we feel like the world is out of control around us, that actually sometimes we need to be reminded that you are God and we are not. And we just need to be still and know that you are God, that you are trustworthy, that you are faithful, that you are true, and that you are good, and that you are working all things together for the good of those who love you. And so we just take this moment to say we love you, God. We trust you. And we just thank you for the moments of silence, the moments where we sit and we get the stuff that's bubbling up out so that we can sit with you with the real questions, the deeper questions of the heart. We want to get past 
the issues of the mind and get to the deeper issues of the heart. We thank you that you are safe, you are okay with all of the bubbling emotions. And we just thank you that you are patient with us as we work through these things. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.